We're ranking all 57 brawlers from worst to best. This is for the competitive meta, specifically in Power League and Club League. And I wanted to give a huge thank you to all the pro players who helped make this tier list. And starting off the F tier, the worst brawler for this meta is Edgar. Edgar was almost at the very bottom of the last tier list, and he's fun to play, but he's not very good right now. Even with his super, it's pretty easy to escape his range and keep your distance away from him. And second worst, we have Penny. She was the worst in the last tier list, and the only reason why I swapped her with Edgar is the fact that there are a couple of brawlers that are really good in the meta right now that Penny kind of plays well against, but she's still left here. Don't play her. <laughs> Next in the F tier, we have Nita moving down from the C tier. Now, it's been a few updates since she was last balanced, but since then, we've had a few brawlers that moved up in the ranks, which is kind of forcing her down. Her super just takes too many hits for how effective her bear actually is. Also moving down from the C tier, we have Shelly. She also hasn't been touched very much, but the brawlers that she counters are being played a little bit less than they used to be, which is why I feel like the F tier makes sense for her. Next is Jackie, who is staying in the F tier. Her biggest problem is that she can't attack while her super is actually activating. So depending on who she pulls in and how many enemies do get pulled in, sometimes her super actually hurts her more than it helps her. Next, we have the C tier brawlers. These are brawlers that could be useful in some situations, but they're never really your best option. <laughs> and starting us off, we've got El Primo, who was in the C tier last time as well. El Primo's a little bit like Edgar, but he has more health, he deals more damage, and he has a much stronger super. Oh, Poco is falling from the B tier down into the C tier. There are two reasons for this. Byron and Pam are just better healers right now, and Crow counters Poco very well, and Crow is very strong at the moment. Next, we have Carl, who's moving down from the B tier into the C tier. Carl's got good range and a strong attack, but his super is very easy for enemies to, to cancel out, right? They can run away, they can interrupt it with a knockback or something like that, and that means that Carl is pretty much just only as good as his attack is, because his super is not used offensively. It can be used defensively to try and run away, but there are better abilities that help brawlers run away than that. Grom is moving from the B tier down into the C tier. He just struggles a lot in this meta right now. He does fine at a long distance away, but as soon as you get even close to him, it's so easy to dodge his shots. He's just, he struggles now. Next is Colt, who is staying in the C tier from the last tier list. Colt is really tricky. He is an amazing brawler if you can play him well. He's a very high skill cap brawler, but also there are a lot of skilled players that just know how to play against a Colt. In the end, I didn't see a reason to bump him up or down. And next is Dynamite, who is also staying in the C tier. Dynamite struggles for the same reasons that Grom does, okay? He's right at a distance, and he's kind of like Colt as well. A very high skill cap brawler that if you know how to play with him, he's amazing but easy to play against if you know how to play against him. He's just slightly better than Grom, which is why this is a good place for him. Next, we have Jesse, who's moving from the B tier down into the C tier. There are some spots on a few maps where she is amazing, where you can put her turret down there if the enemy team does not have a solid counter for her turret. But a lot of brawlers counter her turret, and even if they don't, it's pretty easy to just move away from the turret so that it can't hit you. We also have Bull, who's moving from the B tier down into the very top of the C tier. It's not very much of a move, and he is still useful on some heist maps, but most of the time, you're better off going with somebody else. There even better options in heist in the moment. Next, we have the B tier brawlers. Now, these brawlers are okay in most situations and can be very good choices under the right circumstances, like you're playing them on the right map or mode, or you have the right teammates, or they're used to counter specific brawlers. But in general, there are better options. And BB's actually going up from the C tier into the B tier. And this is thanks to a recent buff to her health. She's obviously gonna be a little bit more difficult to take out, but she still has a short range and can't really do very much on open maps. B is staying in the B tier. She's a really good option against the tanky brawlers because they cannot get close to her without getting hit by her shots, like she could just auto-aim on them. However, in the long-range fights, even though she does have that range, she has to be pretty patient with her supercharge shot because it's really important that she actually hits it, and she can struggle sometimes against brawlers that have faster unload speeds than she does. Next is Amber, who's staying in the B tier as well. Now, Amber's able to dish out a lot of damage if enemies are able to stay outside of that auto-aim range where she's guaranteed her to actually hit. That makes her really good against close-range brawlers, and she really struggles against long-range brawlers. So sometimes she's good, sometimes she's not. B tier's perfect for her. Also staying in the B tier, we have Colette. She's kind of similar to Amber. Great against tanks, struggles against long range brawlers that have small HPs. Good on heists, not that great on other modes. Now, Lou is moving from the F tier up into the B tier. This is all thanks to his super getting a buff so that it now always applies some chill to enemies inside of it. Now, I really thought this was going to make Lou feel really overpowered, but from the looks of it, he's actually right in the B tier, which is solid, and that's all because his attacks are still equally difficult to land. <laughs> Buzz is moving from the A tier down into the B tier. This is partly because players are better at keeping their distance from him, so he doesn't charge a super as often, but also because the resistance gear was removed from the game, which was actually pretty solid of a gear to use with him. Next is Tick, who is staying in the B tier. He's generally worse than Dynamite and Grom and has a little bit more viability in game modes like Bounty and potentially Knockout sometimes as well, but he's still not quite as good as some of the other throwers in the game. Also staying in the B tier, we have Frank. You guys know this, but Frank has the most HP in the game, but he's also like strangely the most vulnerable brawler in the game. He's not a great first pick brawler to use because he's so easy to counter, but sometimes he's really solid as an option if you're the last 
to pick Frank. Also staying in the B tier, we have Mortis, the undead brothers right here. Mm. And Mortis is kind of in that same situation. He's very hit or miss, okay? Sometimes he's going to be absolutely amazing, but you don't want to pick him first because, well, for the same reason as Frank, he's super easy to pick a counter against. Also staying in the B tier, we have Barley. He doesn't have the most range. He doesn't deal the most damage, but his stats are pretty good for how he plays. And also he's pretty consistently like, okay, and useful on some maps, but also not on some others. It is time that Terra moves from the A tier down into the B tier. Terra is only as good as as often as she gets her supercharge. And unfortunately, there are more and more brawlers coming into the game that can easily escape her super. Whether that's brawlers like Eve, who can just like use a gadget and hop away, or Janet, who can literally use their super to fly away. She's still solid, just not quite solid enough for A tier at the moment. Staying in the B tier, we have Nani. If you're playing on a map that has lots of wide open spaces, Nani is incredibly good. Her range is insane. Her burst potential is amazing. She does such a good job of countering really strong brawlers on those long range maps. But if the map's not like that, chances are she's not going to be very good. <laughs> also staying in the B tier, we have Griff. Griff's actually a really good mid range brawler since his attack is wide and can deal a lot of damage. But most of the top tier brawlers right now have more range than him. And some of them can also do more damage than he can. So he's only good on certain maps and in certain modes. Meg is moving from the A tier down into the B tier. Meg is obviously only good when she has her super up, which only happens a couple times per match in most competitive matches. But at the same time, there are a lot of top tier brawlers that can easily slow her down while she gets into her mecha. And then it just gets destroyed easily afterward, which I think justifies her going down to the B tier. Brock is moving from the A tier down into the B tier. When he had his rework a couple of months back, it, he felt like really, really strong, which is why we put him up into the A tier. But as people have gotten more and more used to the fact that his range is less than, you know, he, he's kind of struggled a little bit more and he's still really solid, especially on maps where you want to destroy walls. But otherwise, he seems to be pretty B tier. Next is Fang, who started in the S tier. It is coming all the way down to the B tier. Fang got nerfed hard, okay? He is still very good at assassinating those squishy brawlers, but the nerf to his stun gadget and his, his super, I mean, he's just, he struggles a lot more now. Next, we have Rosa, who's going from the A tier down into the B tier. Rosa rose up into the tier list with the addition of the speed gear, but now all it takes to really counter her is to equip the vision gear, and uh, she's going to struggle. Obviously, the vision gear is not that amazing, but if you're playing a bushy map and you know the enemy team is going to be playing Rosa, you better equip that vision gear. Next is Janet, who is starting in the B tier. This could be the proof you need to know that Supercell does try to release some balanced brawlers, right? <laughs> now, Janet's main attack actually deals a lot of damage for how far away it is, but she cannot just like chain her attacks over and over again because it takes a really long time for it to charge up. She might end up being better than the B tier with the addition of her second star power once that lands, but for right now, the B tier feels pretty solid for her, especially considering the fact that her super can be really tough to control or aim, and it's mostly only useful for like avoiding anybody while putting some pressure on the enemies. Next is Bo, who's going from the F tier all the way up into the B tier, and this is because of the buff to his projectile speed. It has made a huge difference from him. His mines are still really easy to play around if you know where they are, but his attack is a lot more consistent, which is why I think that the B tier feels really good for him. Up next are the A tier brawlers. These are really great options and are only really outshined by like a few S tier brawlers. And starting us off is Sprout, who's moving from the B tier up into the A tier just barely. This isn't a big move since Sprout was somewhat near the top of the B tier in the previous tier list. Now he's at the bottom of the A tier, or it is at the bottom of the A tier. Sorry, excuse me. It also struggles in close range combat like a lot of the other throwers, but it can do pretty well in 1v1s once it has its super up, which is, I mean, obviously it's going to put that super up in that. That helps even the playing field a lot more than the other throwers can at the moment. Next is Daryl, who is staying in the A tier from the previous tier list. Daryl's just really solid. In fact, I'm kind of surprised that we're not seeing a little bit more Daryl gameplay at the moment. At least I'm personally not seeing Daryl play a ton. However, I, uh, I'm not in a competitive meta, so there's a reason I have pros who are helping me make this video. But yeah, Daryl's really solid. His tar barrel gadget is also great for making sure enemies can't get away from him and his super. I mean, he charges it up automatically. He's got super high damage, way better than Bull. He's a really solid rolling assassin at the moment. 8-Bit is moving from the B tier up into near the bottom of the A tier. Even though 8-Bit does move slower than a lot of the other brawlers, his star powers and gadgets do make up for it. And he has an option in every game mode, at least on certain maps. And the reason why is because he just steals so much damage, even if he doesn't have his super up. Gene is moving from the B tier up into the A tier. Gene deals good damage up close. His attacks have a really long range and I mean, he's amazing with the vision gear. If you're going to use the vision gear on that kind of a map, he it, it's insane on him. His super can be a little tough to use, but it can totally change the game in an instant if you know how to use it and you pull the right brawler. Mr. P is moving from the B tier up into the A tier. His stats and abilities recently improved and he's now a decent brawler without his super. His super is still very useful for countering certain brawlers that can't shoot through his porters and he actually feels pretty good right now. Max is moving from the B tier up into the A tier. Now Max doesn't have the best range, but she's one of the fastest brawlers in the game, so she doesn't usually have a lot of trouble getting close to enemies and then 
also running away from them as well. She's so good at dodging some shots from brawlers. She's just insane. She has good DPS. Her super helps her whole team push up can um, up the map and gain some control. She's just really solid at the moment. Also solid is Surge moving from the B tier up into the A tier. Now Surge had an emergency nerf after they reworked his gadgets, but even after his nerf, he's still like uh, he's still really good. Okay, it's just a little bit harder to get past that first upgrade, but his super is still really powerful. Upgrading from level two to level three, or even level one to level two, and his he's really good. And his gadget can make such a big difference. Plus, his super can just jump onto people. I highly recommend if you have not played a lot of search since he got a change, play him a lot. I think that you'll like him. Next is Piper staying in the A tier from the previous tier list. She's got one of the longest reaching attacks in the game, especially with her homemade recipe gadget. Her attacks deal so much damage in the right star power, the right gear, the right situation. She can take out over half of the brawlers in the game with just two shots. Think about that, guys. That's crazy. Oh my gosh. Sandy is also staying in the A tier. I don't know about you guys. I'm getting kind of sick of seeing Sandy in the meta. Like, geez, he's been so good for so long. His super has been and will continue to be one of the best supers in the game if it does not get changed. And his attack still a lot of damage for how wide it is and how far it can reach. And plus, it can deal splash damage. Although, uh, I don't know if that's always the best situation to use it in unless you can get a sneak up on your enemies. Rico's also staying in the A tier. His bouncy castle gadget is not as good as it used to be, but it is it's still incredibly good. It really is, okay? He obviously plays best on maps with lots of walls, but he has enough range and damage to play even on maps without a lot of walls, which is why I think the A tier is perfect for Rico. Also staying in the A tier, we have Belle. Belle's just great, okay? Her damage deals a lot. Her super can deal with tanky brawlers. She can even bounce her shots off with her gadget, although I don't think anybody's using that. Her nest egg is just too good to use. She's just really solid. A tier feels good for her. M's is also staying in the A tier from the previous tier list. If you're playing a map where medium range is good, M's is good, okay? <laughs> she deals so much damage. She has great control. The only real weaknesses that she has is if enemies can outrange her or if they get too close to her and she doesn't have her gadget that can push them away. Stu's moving from the S tier down to the A tier. We're finally seeing a little bit less of Stu now. He's still extremely good, especially in the hands of the right player, but more people are getting used to countering him and picking brawlers that can outrange him as well. Now, Leon's moving from the very bottom of the S tier down to almost the top of the A tier. This isn't a very big fall, but he is still falling down because a lot of the top brawlers have attacks that cover wide areas, so it's harder for him to kind of like sneak around while he's invisible. But if he's against close range brawlers or like sharpshooters with narrower attacks, there's not a lot they can do to stop it. Spike is also moving from the S tier down into the A tier. This is all thanks to the nerf to his life plant gadget, and it is still great against certain brawlers, but a lot more brawlers can get past it now, so it's not quite as OP as it used to be. However, it's pretty, it seems to be pretty solid still about like just healing it really quickly, even if it gets fallen immediately. Gale's staying in pretty much the same place near the top of the A tier. He did get a nerf to his blustery blow star power, but they only nerfed it just a little bit, and he's still pretty good. Plus, his freezing snow star power is, is still a really good ability. It just hasn't been used for a while because uh, Blustery Blow was broken. <laughs> also, staying nearly the top of the A tier, we have Pam. Her attack is wide. It can deal a lot of damage up close. She has a lot of health. Her super with her star power can actually provide a lot of area control, and she can also heal her teammates. She's just like all around really amazing, and I don't see her getting nerfed. She'd be a good brawler to focus on maxing out just because she's generally good everywhere, but not so good that she gets picked up by Supercell's nerf radar. And finally, we got the S tier brawlers. These brawlers are pretty much good anywhere, and they're almost always a good pick or a good ban. And starting us off at the bottom of the S tier is Bonnie. Now, at the time of recording this video, Bonnie was not released. However, I have had experience playing with her, and I also have a semi-pro player who helps me make my videos who also has had experience playing with her on the developer build. So, I could be way off when I put her in the S tier, but our limited experience playing her in the developer build does tell us that she she feels like she's strong, okay? She, I think she's gonna be S tier strong. She's honestly like a better version of Edgar, okay? But take this placement with a grain of salt. She might be even better. She might be even worse than I placed her. Next is Squeak, who is in the B tier and is coming all the way up into the S tier. Just like Surge, Squeak was also broken after the update because of his residue gadget. Now, unlike Surge, even after they gave him emergency nerfs, his gadget is still broken, okay? The super sticky gadget with a star power on top of it, there is just so much slowing going on. I just want to stop facing squeaks. He's so annoying. Like, why does the slow last so long after you leave the slow area? Lola's moving up from the A tier into the S tier. She's got good range. She deals a ton of damage, and her attacks is actually, it's actually really easy to hit because of her speed and the shape of it. And then her super, then her super just adds to all of that, plus the freeze frame gadget allows her to, like, it shields so much. She doesn't quite feel like as ridiculously overpowered 
overpowered as a lot of brawlers have in S tier, but the rest of the S tier brawlers, I'd say feels a little bit similar. This is a very balanced meta at the moment. The S tier brawlers are the best, but they don't quite feel game breaking overpowered like some metas in the past. <laughs> Next, we have Ash who is staying in the S tier. Now, Ash didn't receive any balance changes with this update, but I guess that the way the meta shifted, like Ash is still really strong and by far the best tank in the game right now. And he pairs incredibly well with healers like Pam and Byron. Next is Crow who is staying in the S tier. Crow super is good. His attack is easy to hit. His extra toxic star power and his slowing toxin gadget can affect multiple targets at once. <laughs> and slow. I can't believe that his slow still lasts five seconds. And honestly, I wish that Crow would get some buffs and a nerf to his gadget because without that gadget, he's just not good. <laughs> Next, we have Colonel Ruffs who's moving from the A tier up into the S tier. Honestly, I was actually kind of surprised to see this, but the pros have spoken. Apparently, he's really good at the moment right now. His super just makes him top tier. Just remember when you're using his super to try and buff your teammates instead of Colonel Ruffs because they will often deal more damage than Colonel Ruffs can anyway. Next, we have Byron staying in the number two spot of the S tier. Byron remains the best healer in the game. No brawler even comes close to keep like he can, he can keep his teammates alive from such a long distance. He, he can heal so much so quickly. And he's also a really strong counter to other healers thanks to his Malay star power. It's just kind of crazy to see a support brawler be so good at the moment. He can literally do everything and better than a lot of other brawlers can. And finally, at the very top of the S tier, we've got Eve. As crazy as it sounds, guys, even after the nerfs to Eve, she is still good. She deal, uh, not just good, she's the best. She's really good, okay? She has plenty of damage. She has plenty of range. Her spawns are just, just so annoying. And you know what? Everybody's blaming her happy surprise star power. And I do think that it is very strong, but even without her happy surprise star power, I think she would stay S tier. Probably not the best of the best, but still very solid. And there you have it, the complete tier list. Before you crop me out of your picture, uh, let me just smile. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, I'm fine with you guys sharing that wherever you want. Just don't get rid of my face. <laughs> and also a huge thank you to the pro players who do help out with this tier list. I get a lot of feedback from them to try and create these tier lists to be as accurate as I possibly can. And uh, it gives you a good idea of what the current meta is. If you disagree with the pros, let me know in the comment section below. In fact, a lot of the pros disagree with each other, so that's completely fine as well. Either way, make sure you subscribe for a future tier list so you don't lose track of the meta. Subscribe to my other channels. Watch this video. Use code Kairos in the Brawl Stars shop. And for now, this is Kairos. I'm ticking by and we will see you in Brawl Stars.